It's Oscar season, and on the show tonight, I've got a two-time Academy Award winner, and he's been nominated for another one, but who's going to chat to him? And the winner is... Oh, oh, excited, look, actually excited. <laughs> excited. Graham Norton. Ah, he didn't win. people to thank. It just means so much to be nominated to people like you. Uh, hey, uh, welcome on, welcome all. We have an amazing lineup for you tonight. Hollywood superstar Denzel Washington is on the show. I know. Brilliant young actor Nicholas Holt is here. Top comic Bill Bailey is on the show. And we we'll have music from the amazing Connor Maynard. Good, right? Good. Oh, I am delighted to welcome Nicholas Holt onto the show. Now, do you remember him as the star of About a Boy? Do you? Yeah. Oh, look at it. Oh, do, do, do. <laughs> Who is the best boy? <laughs> oh, I am. Oh, dear. Here he is in his latest film. <laughs> yes, mothers, they do grow up. <laughs> Actually, that's Nicholas playing a zombie in his new film, Warm Bodies. The film poses a big question. Could a beautiful woman ever fall in love with a lumbering, brain-dead zombie? <laughs> well... <laughs> all right. I'm so excited to be meeting Denzel. Oh, something so cool and sexy about a man named after an American city. You know, Denzel Washington, Joaquin Phoenix, Johnny Vegas. <laughs> I believe that's called a roll top. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Denzel's new film is called Flight. Flight. Now, he plays a pilot who has a drink and drug problem. <gasps> Imagine travelling at 500 miles an hour while you're off your face on drugs. Huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The jersey's yellow, urine green. <laughs> As always, I'd like to have Bill Bailey back on the show. As you know, Bill is a huge animal lover. He's campaigned for all sorts of creatures. Uh, baboons, bears, even horses. <laughs> Let's get some guests on! Later, we'll be having music from Connor Maynard! But first, here's a male action report again. It's Bill Bailey! I know. Was it? Now, uh, before, uh, this is so rubbish. I, we should have confirmed this. I was calling you Denzel. Is that correct? Actually, it's Denzel. Oh no, is it really? Yeah, but. So but, was your dad Denzel? Well, he was Denzel, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm Denzel Jr. So my mother started calling me Denzel just so you know she'd say Denzel, and we both would show up. Oh, I see. So she started. She started calling it's a me pronunciation Denzel. thing. Yeah. But now you've, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you've gone back to... <laughs> so you're Denzel now? No, I'm Denzel. Den no, is, I'm that Denzel. What, is that what I'm saying? <laughs> Denzel. Denzel. <laughs> no, Denzel. That's yeah. all we have time for. <laughs> <laughs> but it was lovely to meet you all. No, no seriously, it's Denzel. Den Denzel. Denzel, I'm right. Denzel. It is Denzel. Denzel. OK. No, it's not the only author. Because, Nicholas, your middle name is quite a mouth. What is it? Cara? Caradoc. Karada. Yeah, it's Welsh. It means, uh, <laughs> it means the beloved one. Aww. 
Does it really? Yeah, no, it does. Are people in Wales watching television now laughing at you? It's lovely, it's lovely. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's good for my email address. Oh, I shouldn't say that probably. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm guessing, I'm guessing Bill Bailey isn't your real name. No, 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 it's uh, Mark was the name I was, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Yes, there's no pronunciation problems <laughs> straight. <laughs> no, I was Chris and Mark, but yeah. there's an old jazz standard song called Won't You Come Home, Bill Bailey. Yeah. So, from a very early age, I was known as Bill, and that's just kind of a nickname. But then when it came to your son... It, yeah. It's hard to choose names, I think. It is. It's very hard to choose names. Yeah. So your son, you went for quite a specific name. Yes, Dax. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a punchy name. Yeah. You know, not, not a you know not no. a. I mean, you know, it's a. Did you make it up? No. You know, it's it's a. a <laughs> you know, I just made it up. Got some Scrabble letters. And <laughs> 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 Give me a vowel. Oh, what have we got here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> well, it's Klingon for you. No. <laughs> A lot of people think that I chose it because it's a name in Star Trek, in uh, Deep Space Nine. There's a parasitic slug called <laughs> Dax. What? And a parasitic slug, right. uh, a symbiont, you know. And, um, <laughs> and a lot of people, because I'm a bit of a science fiction fan, they always sort of think that, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. It's not, it's not that at all. It's, a, it's, an, old, it's an old French name. Actually. Very nice to Thanks very much. Uh, now listen, uh, very, 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 very exciting. Uh, Oscar nominated for your new film, Flight. Um, well, uh, congratulations. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's an you know, sixth nomination. Yes. Uh, you've won twice. Yes. When you get the call this time round, is it as exciting or is it kind of... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not like the first time. I mean, uh, the first time is, it was, uh, you know, it went crazy, but uh, it's still an honour, great honour. Who are you going to go with? Um, actually, I think I may be going by myself. My, my wife is, is doing a play in New York. Should we have a competition? Ten dollars, <laughs> 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 by the way. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> so, your wife's in a play. Yeah, she's doing a play. So, uh... So you're just going by yourself? Uh, well, I don't know. Maybe I'll take my mother or something. Because you took your mother before, didn't you? Yeah, and my wife. T together? Yeah. Well, that was a brave move. Because yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know where you told this. You were telling a story about it's a classic mother. Mothers are obsessed, aren't they, by centerpieces? Oh yeah. Wherever yeah, they go, they yeah, love a centerpiece. Yeah. So the the governor's ball afterwards is like a big dinner, and and they had these big centerpieces, and she started talking about how beautiful it was, and I could see where she was going. <laughs> I, I don't know if I had won that year. I don't know if I carried out the Oscar or the centerpiece or both, <laughs> but, but I did carry out the centerpiece. I did. She's like, grab that, son. <laughs> Mom, I'm not taking. She says, well, it's, a, it's a waste. It's a beautiful flower, so I'm walking out. <laughs> it is a weird thing that mothers are so upset. So, so they really are. My, my, my mum, when we went to that uh, Elton John ball thing, she came out with placemats, a pile about this high. <laughs> <laughs> I left her there. I, I went home because I had to work the next day. She was there till three o'clock in the morning and then came home. <laughs> a massive place back. Yeah. She's stolen little kettles and little teapots. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know that thing about your email address? Again, probably shouldn't be telling this story. Uh, yeah. uh, listen, we're here to talk about uh, flight. And your performance in it is phenomenal. Thank Re you. It's extraordinary. You can so see why you got nominated for the Oscar. Thank so you. tell us about your character. Tell us about the story. He is a pilot who has a bit of a drinking problem and uh, there's a potentially catastrophic problem with the plane and he crash lands the plane and, and then is considered a hero uh, but he really starts spiraling downward with, with more and more drink and, and, and people don't know about it and he's, he's a mess and uh, it's comedy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> So 
sold it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, as you say, you play the pilot, and the director, uh, Robert Zemeckis, he's talking about how prepared you were, because you, you did all the flights. Didn't you do flight simulators? Yeah, we got in flight simulators. That was great. I wish I could take one of those home. <laughs> you know, we, we went to Delta Airlines, and they allowed me to, to get into flight simulators and kind of do mock takeoffs and virtual, you know, takeoffs and... Didn't need to land because we, we crashed the plane. Of course, yeah. And how confident? Like, could you fly a plane now? No. 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 no? no. Really? No, no, no. I'm just pushing buttons like I know. <laughs> like I think I know. <laughs> and this is one of these films. They will never show this in in-flight entertainment, will they? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. No. But have you, have you seen it? Yeah, I watched it before getting on a flight. Literally a couple of hours before getting on a flight. It, it, was a, it, was a, it, was a, yeah, it wasn't a good move. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to, yeah, trying to see I if I could find the, the pilot. Yeah, look, you can fly, it's still safe. Go see the movie and, and, and then ca yeah. catch a flight. Well, look, we've got a clip. If you are going on holidays tomorrow, perhaps look away. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is Denzel in charge on, on the fateful flight. That's a good clip. If you, want to see, if you want to see the whole movie, it's out on the 1st of February, so a couple of Fridays time. And the, the, you actually did that. I mean, they rolled the whole thing. Well, well I mean, not in the air, but... No, no, yeah, no, yeah, that, that, that would be excessive. That, yeah. that would be excessive. <laughs> but but you, you can do that. You, you can actually turn a plane over and, and fly it upside down for a short period of time. It, One can do that. Okay. <laughs> He's not in the bus. <laughs> One. One could. Yeah. With uh, a drink taken. With a, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, no, they do that. Yeah, Ryanair do that when they want to get a bit... <laughs> when they want to get a bit more change out of your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Now, as I say, your performance is really terrific. And by the way, I don't think I said good luck. Good luck at the Thank Oscars. You. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. yeah. Um, but... The thing that impressed me most, as a drinker, uh, is your hang... You do hangovers really, really well. <laughs> so they're very good. You know, that kind of... Yeah, that, yeah. 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 You really, I really felt it. Uh, yeah. Because mm. acting drunk... I mean, how, how did you prepare to act drunk? Well, you don't want to act drunk. You want to act like you're not drunk. You are drunk, so you're trying to act like you're not, instead of just, you know, staggering around. He, he, he was pretty lucid, you know, which was even more frightening. I mean, he's, he's drunk flying the plane. And I heard you talking about you, you watched uh, people on YouTube to see how drunks behave. Is that right? Yeah, you can YouTube drunks. <laughs> You, you can. You can just YouTube drunks, and there's, there's one guy who takes about ten minutes to put one shoe on. Oh, I think... Well, we read about that. We found that. You found that? We found that. We also found a guy... I think he's leaving an Aldi, right, and uh, he, he has to go through a sliding door, OK? <laughs> here, here, he, here he is. So, doing well. First one, not a problem. Not a problem. I'm OK. Uh -oh. I'm OK. I'm nearly out. I'm nearly out. I'm out. Oh! Oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> now, we have the one you talked about, the guy with... I think this is the one. The one with the sand... Is it a sandal? Yeah, he's trying to put a sandal on. He's trying to put a sandal yeah, on yeah, at some it's... festival. Here he is. Here he is. Yeah, well, this should be easy. Oh, yeah. Okay, I, no. <laughs> Just side my foot. No, I have to run around now. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh! Sorry, the good Samaritan. Yeah, it's like, yeah. There you oh, go. This poor guy. Oh, he's getting it on. There you go. Now, now yeah, just if you just stand up. There you go, Goy. Oh, you're all you're all good. Oh, oh, oh! oh. 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 Hello, ladies. Yeah. Hello, ladies. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, ladies. Yeah. That was my favorite one. Because <laughs> Nicholas in Skins. Yeah. Uh, you kind of mixed up the acting drunk and being drunk a bit, didn't you? I, I did once, yeah. It was the, the first time I had to do a, a sex scene. Um, and obviously fairly nervous. Of, obviously, so, yes. So, um, so I, I had a little drink beforehand. Um, when you say a little drink? I had two glasses of champagne and the vodka. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and it, it's very difficult, though, when you have, you know, the director's there and he's, like, you know, trying to encourage you to fake climax. 
<laughs> what time of the day was this? This was eight o'clock in the morning. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's hard. Well, that, that's very it's difficult. Tricky. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> have, you, have, you, have you ever had to... Because that was me doing it then. That was it? Yeah. <laughs> It's just, it's just a nice surprise. That's it. That's Unexpected. Yeah. Didn't expect that. Yeah. <laughs> no, acting drunk is, I think it is a hard thing. It's hard. To, yeah. Yeah, because it, it's easy, easy to, overdo. to overdo it and yeah. do the cliché, the slurring and the... Uh, you, really, because when you are actually drunk, you're not, you're not actually... You're, you're, be, you're, you're enhanced, you know, you're a bit louder, you're a bit... A bit and I actually heard this once, it happened to me, where I went to a party and I, I left with the wrong jacket. And uh, it was a, a, a guy who I knew, Peter, he had the same leather jacket. So we both left. I went, oh, wait, I see a problem here. I, I could, I, I, brilliant. I've got a way out of this. I'll phone my phone with his phone and leave a message and he'll get it and then we'll meet up and get the jackets. So I thought I was being really clever and I thought I'd left a message. Hello, Peter, Bill here. Yes, I think there's been some sort of misunderstanding with the jackets. Um, if we meet up in a couple of days, we'll be able to sort this out. Cheerio, goodbye. And then about a week later, I heard my own voice on the voicemail of my own phone. And it was just, Peter, 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 jacket. Like for about ten minutes. I was, oh, oh. We should all hear that once in our lives. Just, not me, obviously. Now, uh, Denzel, you're always in great shape, um, but in this movie, I couldn't help but notice, slightly, he's gone to see the horrible thing to say. Yeah, but, uh, yeah he, you know, he, I put on a. F oh. It was intentional. <laughs> I'm not even going to insult the man. He, he was acting. Yeah, you tried. Yeah, no, I, I mean, we're the, the, one of the first scenes in the movie, uh, I'm, I'm with this young lady, and, and we're naked, and. Uh, and you're selling more and more tickets as a <laughs> very good so i uh let it all hang out we'll say you know he just uh. he's 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 not working out he's he's but are you one of those people are you one of those much. annoying people who finds it hard to put on weight no <laughs> no I, I i can put on weight real easy and in fact for the movie basically what i did was i would eat eat later eat at midnight you know, have a big meal at midnight. Oh, delicious. Oh, delicious. I loved it. Oh, going to bed full. There's full. nothing better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh. yeah. I think it's because I'm Irish. Because of the famine, mm. I always think I'm afraid I might starve to death <laughs> in the middle of the night. Get a few carbs in. Yeah. At midnight. Yeah. yeah. yeah no, right. absolutely. Because <laughs> I, I uh, read a story about when Tom Hanks had to lose all the weight in Philadelphia. Right. You were quite mean to him, weren't you? Uh, yeah, yeah. He, uh, well, he, it, it was extreme. I mean, he was eating only like 800 calories a, 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 a day, and he went way down. So we would do, see, he was really, really skinny in the scenes in the, in the, um, in the courtroom. So I would, like, leave uh, candy bars and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I would, like, sneeze in 500 Almond Joys or, you know. <laughs> but I was like, having pizzas delivered to him. <laughs> Yeah, he thanked me when he won the Oscar. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and in terms of uh, physical transformations, Nicholas Holt, we've seen you gone from boy to man and now to zombie. Because you yeah. play a zombie in Warm Bodies. Yeah. yeah. And it's a sort of new genre. It's sort of zom rom com. Yeah, they've kind of <laughs> they've, they've blended them all together. Uh, yeah, like I thought of that. <laughs> so, th t tell us about the story a little bit. I play a zombie yeah. who, who feels a little bit trapped and he's unhappy being a zombie. He wants to feel alive again. And then... Yeah. Poor guy. Oh, yeah. You know, he's very self-deprecating. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And he, he doesn't want to eat brains, you know, he has to and whatever. Um, but then he, uh, he, he sees, out hunting one day, he sees this uh, Julie character played by Teresa Palmer and instantly just uh, falls for her, basically. And she's the catalyst for him starting to change, change and become human. But he also eats her boyfriend's brains. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of this weird thing where he eats her brains and then in this film, you, it, the zombies eat the brains and they relive the people's memories. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> anyway, so Warm Bodies uh, opens on the 8th of February. This is a clip and it's kind of setting up the whole idea of you being a zombie in your zombie world. Yeah. I like the zombie walk, too. The zombie walk is very good. Yeah, yeah. And they filmed it all in, is it Montreal? Yeah. And why did they go to Montreal? 
Uh, they're, they're really accommodating in Montreal. I mean, and also there's, a, there's Mirabel Airport, which is closed down, disused, and, and the old Olympic Stadium as well. There's loads of places which are just abandoned, basically. Mm. Oh, great. We could go in there and... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it sounds Montreal. It sounds lovely. Yeah. <laughs> and they speak French. <laughs> this gets better and better. Yeah. <laughs> East London's thinking, oh, one day we'll have zombie films made. <laughs> oh, we're lucky. <laughs> and in terms of an acting talent, obviously, you know, so Denzel's in a movie, he's playing a pilot, he, he's uh, studying drunk people on YouTube. How does an actor prepare to play a zombie? It was, yeah, I'm not really sure what we did. We watched a lot of zombie films. Um, and then it was just kind of that thing of... Um, it's kind of being really hungover. That's what I kind of thought about a lot of the time. Just that feeling when you wake up and, and you know, you, you can't really talk. You're groaning. You feel terrible. And we tried not to blink a lot because I thought zombies probably wouldn't blink. Of course, Which was yes. a bad decision. <laughs> there were some long scenes. <laughs> and then, um, the difficult bit is the, is the zombie run. Because then, like, zombie walking, you just kind of slow shuffle. But yeah. Teresa's a really quick runner. And, um, and there's a few scenes when we're, we're running around, and, I, and I'm trying to keep up, but in a zombie fashion. And I just... <laughs> you got to show us. Man. I look like an idiot. you got to show us. <laughs> no, right? Right? The zombie run. Right? The zombie run. Where should I go? Okay, <laughs> anywhere. Oh, uh, man, I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> <laughs> so, I haven't done it in a little while. I'll, okay. I'll do it a long Okay, do it a long time. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. And zombie stairs. Do you want me to chase you to get you a bit of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't have Okay. Set. Action. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually really good. <laughs> oh. Oh. We nearly, we nearly lost you. <laughs> that was, that was oh. But the staring does sound really horrible. Like, did you genuinely not blink? I think I blinked. I blinked once, but that's later on when he uh, when he starts to get more human. Um, so, but I was wearing contact lenses, which actually really helps for for not blinking. Oh, that, that was just a choice you made, or is that something, I mean, is that... Yeah, it was, it was a dumb choice I made when I was speaking to the director one day, and I was like, I don't think zombies would really blink. They don't need to do that. And he was like, yeah, okay, cool, give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd sit there, and we'd be in the middle of a scene, and I'd be looking, and I'd be like, oh, man, my eyes are hurting so much. <laughs> um, and, but, but, yeah, it kind of maybe worked. Oh, should we try it? You, you've got two Oscars, you don't have to do this. Let's all, let's, let's... let's Are we doing a staring contest? Let's, let's do a staring thing. No, oh, I'm in it, I'm in Oh, you're in it? Oh, I'm in. Are, you, are you really competitive? <laughs> This is I'm the all, best staring contest. I'm already... Uh, with, uh, Can no, I just say, no blinking, right? I sort of already know Denzel's going to win this. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> you're, 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 you're staring into camera five. Okay. Bill's on four. Nick's on seven. Okay. And uh, I have a range of cameras. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Don't start yet. Hang on. Okay. Here we go. So, three, two, one, stare. Oh, they're still going. I gave up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's good. Is it? Is it? Oh. Good? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Nicholas Holt is our winner. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you. You're good. You are very good at that. Um, <laughs> and here's the amazing thing. You've been in so many things about a boy skins, X Men, a single man, and uh, but yet here's the interesting. Denzel, guess what year Nicholas Holt was born in? 19... Uh, Correct. 84? Oh. 89. You have an Oscar as old as him. <laughs> oh, <yes>. right. <laughs> <laughs> 89, so that makes you... 23. 20, 23. Yeah. Oh, because... Uh, I, I have underwear older than you. <laughs> <laughs> The first time we really saw you was in About a Boy. And it's weird because it, you are recognisable. There's, there's another shot of you. Oh, there. That's really... That just looks like you. Yeah. <laughs> Apart from the pudding bowl. Because <laughs> how old were you in that movie? I was 11 when we did that, yeah. So that must have been hard as an 11-year-old walking around with that hair. I mean, I had pretty embarrassing hair beforehand, so... Oh, OK. <laughs> it was kind of, <laughs> is, is that, that how you, is that how you got the part? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, on the other hand, is extraordinary because since kind of St. Elsewhere and quite a few you don't seem to have changed 
at all. <laughs> no, I just, uh, you, you know, uh, good genes. My mother is, is 90. Wow. And, uh, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Oh, this, this, doesn't, this won't play in the States. <laughs> yeah. That's right in the States. And you yes. know she'll see it. Oh, she'll <laughs> see it. And I'll hear about it, too. I'll hear about it. But, oh, uh, yeah. By the way, uh, if you want to take that... Uh, <laughs> 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 You're right. You're right. <laughs> Whoa! You still got it. You still got it, Denzel. You still got it. Eyes on the fruit. <laughs> well, we found a level. Because <laughs> Bill, what age were you when you discovered your look? <laughs> if, if you know what I mean. Where are you going with this, Graham? Well, no, because I see, you've always looked like this as long as I've known you. I've always looked, looked like, like this, yeah. yeah I'm so rocking, it's called a scullet. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I've always been hairy um, since a child. Uh... I'll, I'll get to you, Denzel, on this topic. I... <laughs> <laughs> I, I've got, yeah, a lot of, lot of hair. Yeah, I was just, uh, just like a tribble, you know, when I was a, <laughs> when I was a kid. And, um... It stopped me having, a, a, you know, having tattoos because I really wanted a tattoo, you know, like any, when you're like a rite of passage. And I was a teenager, but I was very hairy. And uh, and the tattooist, I went and said, "Could I get a tattoo?" And he looked at all the hair and he said, "Well, he said, the only thing that would make sense on you, something you'd glimpse in a dense forest." <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, I had like a, like a panther trapped in a thicket, you know. <laughs> Help me! <laughs> Woodman's cottage, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, but, uh, here's the thing. So, very hairy, uh, but also a lover of nature. Yes. Yes. Well, you're saying there's some kind of link there. Well, it's it. Maybe. Uh, it could be. Yeah. Because uh, you've just finished making a documentary for the BBC. Yes. Uh, and this is a fascinating story, and I didn't know it. Okay. Follows in the footsteps of the naturalist Alfred Russell Wallace. Yeah. Now, apparently very important, but I haven't heard of him. Yeah, that, and that's the reason why I wanted to make this film, was because nobody's heard of him. And he is probably the greatest naturalist of the 19th century, per perhaps one of the greats of all time. And he was a Victorian explorer who travelled throughout what is today modern Indonesia and Singapore and Malaysia. And it was, it was the Malay archipelago then. And he, he travelled throughout this, whole, this entire archipelago for eight years, pretty much on his own, and he collected thousands of specimens, he discovered thousands of new species, he made an enormous contribution to the sort of to natural history and uh, our knowledge of the natural world. And crucially, he came up with a theory of evolution, independently of Darwin, in 1858. But since Wallace's death in uh, 1913, his, his memory's kind of been lost. And it's Darwin that everyone knows. And what, what, what's weird is because, you know, now you've just done this travelling around this area yeah. and it's still not an easy area to travel around. No, so back then, I mean... Yeah, you think in the 1850s he was travelling through jungles, up rivers that no Europeans had ever travelled. Discovering species, to seeing birds of paradise, all these amazing sights that no European had seen. And he was doing this on his own with no mobile phone, no anti-malarials. Nothing, you know, just a few Victorian, you know, jars and a couple of butterfly nets and, you know, <laughs> and, a, and a sort of, and a determination. Well, we've got a clip of you uh, going down one of those rivers right. and seeing some of the species. <laughs> and is it the Chinese? Is it the Chinese that are fascinated by them? Well, my guide, Eric, who took me up the river, he said that uh, he took a party of Chinese guys up the river and they were fascinated by the fact these monkeys had a permanent erection. And, you know, the Chinese are very fond of their, you know, their sort of medicines and their natural patterns. So they were saying, basically, I want some of what the monkeys had, you know? <laughs> and so he tried to persuade them that it's really poisonous because they eat, you know, young sort of um, uh, leaves and, and un unripe fruit. But these Chinese guys just ate all this stuff thinking, come on. <laughs> Natural Viagra, and they all just were violently ill. And nothing <laughs> but um, so it's just because of their diet. That it's the diet, yeah, yeah. They have this, uh, they have this, and, and also. <laughs> You're yeah, young. Are you, are You're you young. Just gotta pick the right, pick the right fruits. Okay. No. 
<laughs> That'll help. Um, yeah. But uh, you talk about China a lot in yeah. your tour, uh, Quam Peddler. Yes. Which, what a tour. It starts 26th of April, yeah. and you've just added an extra 41 dates yes. later in the year. Yeah. Wow. Because yeah. they've all setting out. Yeah, which is fantastic. Yeah. But you talk about your travels in China. Yeah, that's right. I'd spent uh, about a month in China earlier um, uh, last year, and uh, it's a place that's, that's it's hard to like sometimes, because it's a place with where there's little compassion, I have to say. You know, and I was, we went to a, an industrial part of southern China, Guangdong. And uh, there's um, a lot of Chinese restaurants, obviously, in China, you know, yeah. as you can imagine. <laughs> it's um, so popular. It's there. so popular. <laughs> <laughs> we went to this Chinese restaurant, and this is, this is one of the most extraordinary, it was a, a very surreal thing. We went to the Chinese restaurant, and like a lot of restaurants, Chinese restaurants, there's things in tanks. But, you know, crabs, lobsters, all that thing. Then there were some other things slithering around. You know, snakes, lizards, to be eaten on the menu, right? And then, and I kid you not, there was an owl in a cage on the menu, right? That was just there, waiting to be, you could pick something out, all have a prawn and an owl. Right? <laughs> I was thinking, this is the stuff they've got on display. You know, thinking, what have they got, like, you know, behind? <laughs> You know, they got like a, you know, like a Bigfoot or something back there, yeah. <laughs> a phoenix, you know? <laughs> yeah, actually quite a tricky to cook, mate. So, uh, but... <laughs> and I, so what we did is we negotiated with them and said, can we buy this owl? And then, of course, there was a lot of to and fro in, in Mandarin. Eventually they said, yeah, all right. And then it was all laughing then. It was like these crazy Westerners want a, want a takeaway owl, you know? So <laughs> <laughs> they wrapped this owl in sellotape. Right, and You're kidding? No, they wrapped it in sellotape, they put it in a cardboard box, right, and they handed it to us, and we said thanks very much and drove off. And we sort of indicated with a phrase, take us to a wood, a forest, somewhere we can release the owl. And the owl, by the way, now was really, really angry, <laughs> very, very angry, and, and so, we, uh, at this point, we get, we're in a wood, a forest, in, in, at dusk, right, with this really angry owl wrapped in sellotape. <laughs> and I'm thinking, this is, this is when you meet your school's kid's headmaster. You know what I mean? Like, you meet someone you know from school. They go, what are you doing? Oh, it's not what it seems. <laughs> <laughs> it's Bill Oddie's birthday party or something. <laughs> and, uh, so, anyway, right, I then had to say to the Chinese taxi driver, right, uh, you hold the talons while I cut the sellotape off the beak with these nail scissors, right? Now, there is not a phrase book in the world. <laughs> <laughs> but we did it. We cut, we cut it free and we let it go. And it flew off into the woods. So... Oh, beautiful. I know. You're a hero. We're about, to have, we're about to have music, but very quickly, I must just ask you, because uh, famous, you're good friends with uh, President Barack Obama, well, Matt, Matt likes you are. talk yes, every day are. or something. You know? uh, he's busy. You yeah, he's, got he's so things. tied up. Yeah. But uh, see, you're all friends. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you're sharing a joke. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like friends. We're talking about owls. <laughs> <laughs> but he's doing his re inauguration. Is it next Monday that's happening? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, so you're not going? Uh, 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 no. <laughs> you went to the first one, though, didn't you? I did go to the first one. We've got a picture of you at the first one. Now, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, My uh, wife. <laughs> the, the, the event started at like, I don't know, one o'clock. That was like seven in the morning. <laughs> and so she said that, you know, we, we got to make sure we get seats. We got to get seats. <laughs> you so, are in the front row. Yeah, we actually, they, they, were, they were like, we had orange tickets. And they had different colored tickets. And I had done all this stuff in the inauguration and made the help speeches and all this stuff for the president. And they give me these seats that are like 30 rows back. I said, oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm moving up. So I, so I moved up front, and uh, that's me waiting for uh, my family to get there. Because where is your wife? Is she just, like, she's in a warm bed, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, I was actually there about three hours too early. So have you put that paper down to save a seat for her? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all that's taken. That is taken. <laughs> Right, it is time for music now. Uh, 2013, this is going to be an amazing year for this guy. Performing his new single, Animal, please welcome Connor Maynard! Oh.
Well done, sir. Have a little seat there. Do 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 do. do. Very good. Very nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you, mate. Oh. Very nice to meet you. Very good. Thank you very much. Oh. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Denzel, guess what year Connor was born in? <laughs> the 90s. Yep. 92. 92. <laughs> 92. Wow. Uh, so sorry. Yeah, even, <laughs> even Nicholas was working by then. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, gen I, genuinely, I genuinely was. Yeah, you were, weren't you? Yeah, yeah you were doing ads and stuff. Uh, so that's the new single, and it's off the album uh, Contrast. Yes. Which is available now. An yep. animal new single that's out on the 21st of January. Yes. Am I correct? Am I correct? Yeah, that's all perfect. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously, you've done really well here, but now is 2013 the year when you try to really break you taking America seriously. Well, yeah, I literally just got back from America, actually. I've been over America promoting the album. Um, it's hard. It's a massive market, so yeah. it, is, it is difficult. But, you know, if, if you've got the drive, then it's kind of, you've got, you've got to... It's, what, it's something that I, you know, I dreamed about when I was younger, so for me, it's about trying to get that. You can't say when I was younger. When I was younger. <laughs> 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 Last week, when I thought about it, <laughs> yeah. I thought, you know, it's something great to do. <laughs> now, before we go, before we go tonight, uh, there's just time for a visit to the Red Chair. So, uh, who have you got? Who have you got? Hello. Hello. Oh, now she's assumed the brace position as a pilot. You know. <laughs> she's just, uh, waiting for the oxygen. What's your name, nice lady? My name is Florence. Florence, lovely. And uh, where are you from, Florence? Um, French. Okay, fine. That's all right. <laughs> do it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, where, what do you do, Florence? French I'm Florence. a PA. To. To uh, my boss. <laughs> <laughs> she annoyed me too. I, everything about that annoyed me. Uh, okay, uh, we'll, we'll, have, we'll do another one. We'll have another one. Oh, here she is now. Hello. Hello, evening. Ah, uh, what's your name? Sasha. Sasha. Uh, what do you do, Sasha? Um, I'm a consultant uh, dermatologist with an interest in paediatric dermatology. Well, I did ask. <laughs> <laughs> if only had a pen. Uh, right, Sasha, off you go with your story. Um, so when I was 12 years old, I was invited to a school friend's uh, sleepover. And in the middle of the night, I had the call to nature. And so I, in the dark, I tiptoed into the bathroom. And as soon as I hit that uh, warm seat, a uh, complete flow. But a uh, split second later, uh, I heard behind me a bleated, Ooh! <laughs> so I jumped up and I snapped on the light, and I saw that I'd actually sat and weed on my friend's elderly nan, <laughs> who was also answering a call to nature. Oh, she's peeing as well! <laughs> it was a double decky! <laughs> oh, that is quite good! You can walk, you can walk! <laughs> You can just contact us via our website as we miss the very address. Thank you to my guests tonight, Connor Maynard.